Prince Boji is the smallest individual to join Boss, despite his huge parents. Due to his impairments, Boji avoids playing with kids his age and younger because of misconceptions and public disdain. Cage, a shadow creature, appears in his day. Cage grabs his clothes at knife point. Boji finally understands Cage and follows his orders. Boji does it without hesitation, so Cage tells him to do it again the next day at the same place. Boji meets Cage at the planned spot the next day wearing more clothes to be robbed. Cage calls Boji a stupid for obeying. When Boji says he enjoys his company and just cares, they become friends. They meet Boji overweight in clothes Cage would remove and go home nude. When Boji brings Cage home, his stepmother Queen Hilling mocks him for always coming home naked. She asks Boji to prepare for his father. Boji sobs as he gets ready, but Cage walks by and notices him. Cage empathizes and bonds with him. Boji visits his seventh-ranked father, King Boss. The monarch orders Domus to teach Boji swordsmanship and tells him to grow strong enough to rule. Domus complies. Prince Data, Boji's younger, larger, and more developed half-brother, confronts Domus during practice. Data strikes first, but Boji dodges numerous times before striking Data in the head with a delicate blow that impresses everyone, including Cage, who supports him. Boji's fines and gentle counterattacks irritate Data. Boji stops evading and is defeated by Data while crying after Domus signals him. Boji's situation worsens when Apis, a sword of the king watching from the roof, tosses a spear that terminates the fight and crowns Data the winner. Boji is bedridden and bandaged after the bout. Your fighting style is not that of a king. Domus signed to him before he stopped avoiding Data's assaults. He crawls out of bed and picks up a normal-sized blade. After failing to pick up the coin, Cage throws it at him. To avoid embarrassing Cage, he wipes his tears and puts on a brave front as he approaches us. Cage reassures him that only he can wield a sword like that. Boji tells Cage where his clothes are to avoid embarrassment, and Cage promises to stop stealing from him. Cage watches Boji sleep. Someone enters as Cage is leaving. Her feet and ankle-length clothes reveal her femininity. Cage puts her hands above the comatose Boji and they glow green, healing Boji's wounds. When King Boss dies and his will is red, Prince Boji, the kingdom's first prince, takes the throne. Queen Hilling breaks the late king's will and declares Prince Data the next king. Boji departs crying. Bebin tells Boji that Cage has left for voyage after confronting him again. Boji searches the snake cave alone for Cage with Meet Sumida, a large snake he saved as a child. Meet Sumida informs Boji that his lord Bebin has captured Cage but permitted him to escape on a critical voyage that Boji cannot share. He assures him it's not meant to damage him. After remembering how he was chosen to be king but rejected due to his weakness, Boji joins Cage. Cage has also promised to help him. The queen always denies his plea to depart for the same reasons. He climbs a high floor window to escape the castle. The queen enters as he releases his homemade rope. Boji resists as Dorsh, the queen's shield, pulls him up, loosening the ropes and sending him tumbling. Queen Hilling runs to Boji and finds him unconscious, groaning and glowing green. She shreds her clothing and treats Boji. Boji remembers her visiting him while he slept the night before the match. Hilling relaxes alone and recalls her first meeting with Boji and the obstacles she overcome to form the relationship she has now. She softens, enabling Boji to travel and learn. She provides Domus, his instructor, and Hakuro, his personal caregiver. Boji embarks. They continue their trek through hazardous forests and plain lowlands with everything intact. Boji's meat gets stabbed by knives thrown from afar as they set up camp to sleep. They find a group of dogs dead in the morning after Boji stabbed them with poisoned meat. After burying the dogs, they go to another settlement with a pit to the gates of hell. Domus takes Boji to the gates of hell and tells Hakuro to find a hotel. Domus immediately throws Boji into the fire pit and leaves him to burn. Boji falls safely on the pit bottom while Cage comes out of his suitcase and they cry together. Cage tells Boji that he has been with him since he fell from the window while fleeing until he tried to eat the poisoned meat. He says Bebin, the snake handler, told him to travel with Boji to visit the one who will make him powerful. They must travel further into the underworld to meet this person. As they approach their destination, Boji smells gas, knocking them out. Two smoke-emerging men take Boji and Cage on their automobiles. They travel to an abyssal kingdom. King Desha, the kingdom's monarch and second-ranked person, greets them when they wake up. He mocks Boji for his shortcomings and his younger brother's kingship. Cage tells him they came to see a man who can turn a weak man into a king. 
thinking Desha realizes he's the one they're looking for and must evaluate the trainee. One of his knights is testing Boji. Boji is ordered to attack the knight, a captain of the Order of the Underworld, a tenacious gang. After realizing the situation, Boji gently strikes the guard. Before Cage defends Boji again, Desha mocks his fragility. He tells Desha that Boji's strength is evading punches. Boji defies Desha's command to stop the guard's surveillance. He avoids strikes quickly and accurately, impressing the chamber knights. The knight fighting Boji pauses and praises Desha's speed. Desha, still unimpressed, feels Boji can survive but can't win because he can't penetrate his opponent's armor. Desha refuses to educate Boji despite Cage's persuasion, saying he cannot nurture an inexistent gift. King Desha expels them. Cage encourages Boji to work hard and get stronger. The knight Boji battled instructs them to give the letter of recommendation to the right person. They are told Prince Despa, the king's younger brother. King Desha wasn't telling them since he was competing with Despa and was just joking around. They visit Prince Despa after thanking the knights. They explain their presence. Despa invites Cage inside after receiving payment. He reads Boji's hands and realizes that he is powerless. He mentors him and adopts him. Boji trains every day until he hears a massive blast while Cage is outside cleaning. He hurries into Boji's training room, which he isn't authorized to enter, and asks about the loud noise and Despa and Boji's well-being. As Despa answers Cage's questions, Cage sees Boji posing in front of a split rock. He worries about Boji as the door slowly closes on him. Boji completes his training by learning the Desparts, Despa's teaching style. Cage, Despa, and Boji travel to celebrate Boji's training. Cage asks Boji about his weapon as they leave. Boji's use impresses Cage, but its thin, needle-like appearance disappoints him. Cage questions Despa's claim that giving Boji a needle and calling it a sword won't help. They celebrate after Boji apologizes. While they are eating, three evil beings that live in the underworld approach the party and begin to battle. They make fun of Despa's appearance, and he replies by hitting one of them, which he soon regrets. When Boji notices that Despa is being attacked by a group of monsters, he doesn't stay down and let them beat him up. He tries to protect himself but is immediately driven aside. He rises back up and delivers a daisy soft attack to the monster's chin after dodging a couple hits. After a brief period of time, the monster begins to lose his equilibrium and collapses, making Boji's punch official as a knockout. After dodging a few assaults from the monster, Boji eventually pulls his weapon, the needle sword, and destroys him in a flash of lightning as the monster falls to the ground wailing in agony. Despa checks his vitals and determines that he merely faded out like previously, despite Cage's suspicions that Boji killed the monster. The technology underpinning Boji's unsuccessful assaults that still have significant impact is subsequently revealed to Cage by Despa. The punch was placed and timed exactly so, and the needle was poked without inflicting much harm to the brain or blood vessels. Boji wins, and Cage congratulates him. Boji and Cage departed Despa for home. Despa encourages Boji to embrace himself and show courage. Knights of the Order of the Underworld volunteer to take Boji home as the three men say goodbye. Despa tells them that the kingdom has been penetrated by underworld criminals, and King Desha has dispatched the knights to retrieve Boji and catch them. Cage encourages Boji with his newfound Despa's power while the knights find the criminals. The knights explain to Cage and Boji how the robbers entered the realm. Cage and Boji reach the kingdom to find a criminal pursuing innocent bystanders. Despa encouraged the knight to wait until the criminal arrived, making him one of the most dangerous. Aukin, the Sword of the Underworld, will meet the Underworld Order leader, who is fighting Despa, after slicing through the population. The knight prevents Boji from fighting Aukin since Despa predicted he would lose. The knight orders Boji to defend Queen Hilling at the castle. Boji and Cage rush to castle. Inside the castle, Apis is ambushed by the criminals, Black and Red, as he is carrying Miranjo back inside. Black grabs Miranjo and makes a run for it, but is quickly found by an irritated Apis. Zoko appears suddenly and apologizes to Apis, seemingly calming him down before poisoning him by surprise and taking Miranjo instead. Dorsha sustains major damage in his fight with the Hellhounds, as Healing witnesses in terror. Mitsumara, however, appears out of the blue and helps save Dorsha, telling Healing to heal Dorsha so that he may survive. Just as Healing saves Dorsha's life, however, Gigan threatens to attack the group. Mitsumara fights as best he can but is eventually beaten to the ground, overpowered by Gigan. But Boji arrives and eventually knocks Gigan out. Boji then begs Healing to heal the also injured Mitsumara, as Kage gives Healing more potions to help her with the healing. 
As healing steadily heals Mitsumara, Gigan wakes up and attacks the group, but Boji breaks Gigan's hammer and incapacitates Gigan again. After healing Mitsumara, Boji hugs healing in gratitude, and the two reconcile for a while. But Gigan wakes up again only to drop to his knees in servitude to Boji, acknowledging his strength. Back in town, the captain is struggling to fight with an immortal Oaken who keeps regenerating. A hidden dispa quickly calls Desha to summon lightning to his spot and incapacitates Oaken with a strike of lightning. It is then revealed that Oaken used to be Despa and Desha's brother who turned man due to his immortality. Despa quickly binds Oaken with a rope so that he does not cause further damage. Deep underground, Domus and Hokuro finally reach the entrance to the underworld portal. When they open the gates, however, King Desha's troops are already there, coming through from the other side. The two sides can't decide whether or not they are in conflict, but none of them can back down either. Domus is warned not to stand in the way lest he will die. But even so, Domus successfully holds them off alone with his superior sword skills, as Hokuro watches quietly from the side. It all comes to a halt, however, when King Desha joins the fray. As an assassin comes up behind Hokuro, Domus is quickly overpowered by King Desha, who states that he does not intend to kill anyone except maybe Bosu. Gigan suddenly crashes down, carrying Boji and Kage along with him. Upon seeing Boji well and alive, both Domus and Hokuro cry a sense of relief, while Boji is visibly upset and traumatized upon meeting Domus again after his betrayal. Upon seeing this, Kage shouts at Domas, who then tries to give his life an apology for his betrayal by jumping down this flight of stairs, but ultimately fails due to his well-trained physique. Hokuro, upon seeing this, comes to Domas' aid and tells him that killing himself is not the solution and that at the moment, protecting Boji is all that matters. The pleasantries are cut short, however, when King Desha orders his soldiers to seize Gigan as he is still a criminal. Gigan fights off the soldiers as Kage ineffectively tries to stop the fighting. King Desha ends up striking Gigan with lightning and causes him to pass out. Domus asks who it is King Desha is truly after, to which King Desha replies to be Miranjo, the cause of all this mess. Gigan wakes up in a fit of rage and targets King Desha, who is preparing to shoot another lightning bolt at Gigan, but the bolt is dispelled by Boji, who comes to Gigan's aid. King Desha readies himself for a fight, but Boji throws down his sword to show that he doesn't want to fight. Kage runs up to them and reveals that Boji is Despa's apprentice, which prompts Desha to call Despa and ask about their plan. Despa persuades King Desha to return to the underworld by telling him his plan to capture the Red Demon after they kill off Miranjo. King Desha agrees in exchange for taking Gigan with them as an enlisted officer in the Order of the Underworld. After pondering, Gigan also agrees, then says his goodbyes to Boji and Kage, thanking them on the way out. As the troops leave, Domus and Hokuro confront Boji, who still seemed wary of the two from their past betrayal. Domus apologizes to Boji, but is met with overwhelming disdain from him as he looks away traumatically. Boji runs up the stairs, exiting the labyrinth, followed by Kage who challenges Boji to a race to keep his mind off things. Domus and Hokuro both have a heartfelt moment together over their shared experiences before heading towards the underworld portal to destroy it. At the surface, Boji and Kage encounters Apis laying on the ground. Upon waking him up, Apis explains to Boji about Miranjo's wishes and that he cannot defy Miranjo because he feels he owes her. Apis then tries to fight Boji, before falling to the ground from Boji's strong aura. He acknowledges Boji's strength and wishes he could save everyone, including Miranjo. Back in town, Oaken breaks free from his binds and starts running back to the castle towards Miranjo, who is revealed to have summoned Oaken using mind control to protect her from the criminals. Boji arrives and sees Zoku running away. Boji chases Zoku all the way to the castle walls along with Oaken. Zoku tries to poison Boji, but it is ineffective as human poison does not work against giants like Boji. Zoku tries to run away, but Boji strikes and incapacitates Zoku with surgical precision before tying him up with a rope. Oaken climbs down and points his sword towards Boji, who do the same. The two fight it out with Oaken becoming increasingly surprised by Boji's battle prowess, but soon realizes that Boji's fighting style is not particularly useful against his immortality. Meanwhile, Healing and her entourage finds a piece lying on the ground in bad shape and heals his poison as well. The group discusses what has happened and decides to hurry towards Boji to help. Boji is trying to hold out for as long as possible against Oaken until finally Despa and the captain arrives. Despa calls out to Desha for another lightning strike against Oaken, but Oaken learns to redirect the lightning so it does not hit any of his vital organs. Oaken defeats the captain and starts approaching Despa, who manages to pin his arm and hold him still so that both of them could be hit by the lightning. But before that could happen, Oaken stabs Despa in the chest, prompting an angry Boji to attack Oaken again. The two have a brief fight before Oaken gets the upper hand and gets ready to stab Boji. Upon seeing this, Kage desperately runs towards Boji and swallows him whole. But this only prompts Oaken to stab Kage instead in order to get out. Oaken stabs a desperate Boji as well and returns to Miranjo's side. Seeing this, Miranjo takes over Red's body and begins healing Kage to everyone's surprise. Back in the castle, Bebin confronts Bose who is still held in the dungeons. Bose tells Bebin everything about Miranjo's tragic past as well as his memories from before. 
Bozen asks about the foe Boji is currently facing and how even his powerful son cannot defeat this immortal foe, and that he might have to slay it. Meanwhile, Mitsumara arrives to the scene and fights against Oken as best he can to hold him off as Bebin and the others begin to arrive one by one. Domas, Bebin, Dorsha, and Apis all fight against Oken in an intense fight, but are slowly and surely overwhelmed with Oken's immortality. Boji stands up in his last attempt to fight back as Oken rushes towards him, but the fight is interrupted by King Bose who had just arrived to the scene. Bose hits a severely injured Boji and the rest of the group and sends them flying, only to heal all of them using Data's inherited restorative magic from Queen Healing. Consequently, Boji and the group are not fully recovered thanks to the healing. Oken stands up against the group ready to fight them again, but is quickly confronted by Bose instead in a battle of invincibility versus immortality. Bose hits Oken and disintegrates him in one powerful hit, but Oken quickly recovers no matter how many times Bose pummels him down. Thinking for a solution, Bose pulls out a huge boulder from the ground and proceeds to jam a compressed Oaken inside the boulder, preventing him from regenerating back. After defeating Oaken, Bose attempts to give the group an ultimatum, to swear allegiance to him or die fighting to get Data back. After little contemplation, the group instead swears allegiance to Boji and readies themselves to fight King Bose. But Despa points out that only Boji is a match for Bose and that the others who interfere would just die recklessly. Ignoring this, Domas charges Bose in an attempt at the redemption, but is quickly stopped by Boji who incapacitates Domas with a single hit. Boji walks towards King Bose and confronts his father in an intense fight between kings. Boji, however, easily repels any attack Bose throws at him and succeeds in dealing an incapacitating blow to King Bose. The group looks at Boji in awe as their once invisible King Bose is being completely dominated dominated by Boji. King Bose uses his remaining strength to crawl up to Moranjo and lift up his club in an attempt to break Moranjo, but Boji stops Bose and incapacitates him with a single thrust. Weakly squirming on the ground, Bose reveals that he wanted to at least give Data's body back to him by breaking the curse, prompting Moranjo to realize that Bose never wanted to be brought back and that all this time she could not see his pain. Bose disagrees and thinks that he is the one neglecting Miranjo's feelings. The two converse about their thoughts and regrets over the years as Miranjo tells Boji to destroy her in order to break the curse and bring Data back. Api steps up to persuade Miranjo to protect herself, but Boji makes up his mind and destroys Miranjo, vowing that he'll free her from the demon. The mirror breaks and releases both Miranjo's and Bose's soul, which floats up towards the sky. But before it gets too high, the red demon suddenly appears and quickly snatches Miranjo's soul with its mouth. Boji quickly directs Hokuro to shoot the demon with his crossbow, which distracts the demon who does not see Despa summon a lightning bolt right above it. The demon is hit with lightning and falls to the ground, where the captain quickly decapitates its head, allowing Despa to pick it up. Despa states that if the demon ever wants his head returned, he would need to grant him a wish. But before Despa could use the wish to return Oken back to normal, Data instead uses it to return Miranjo back to life. Both Despa and the captain are visibly upset at Data's action, which prompts Data to apologize and that somehow they'll make it up to them. Seeing Data's resolve, Despa ultimately allows it and settles on being compensated with gold and silver instead. The captain is bewildered as Despa breaks the tough news to King Desha, who surprisingly forgives them and lets it go. Immediately upon hearing the news, King Desha finally accepts the ranking as number one king, hoping that he will get an artifact from the Divine Treasure Vault that can rescue Okin. After saving Miranjo and having a heartfelt reunion, Data reveals that he has seen all of Miranjo's memories mixed up with Bose's memories from the time he was trapped inside his own body. This made Data empathize with Miranjo, who's always been there for him since she was in the mirror. In front of Healing and everyone else, Data announces that he not only plans to marry Miranjo, but also relinquish the throne to Boji so that he may become king. Everyone then huddles together to celebrate Boji's ascension, while Kage leaves the scene, convinced that King Boji now no longer needs a crook like him to be by his side. Boji, however, searches long and hard for Kage, who is nowhere to be found. Visibly upset, Boji goes through the day with a gloomy expression drawn across his face, which prompts Queen Healing to scold Boji for wearing such a sad expression on his face, despite now being king. Healing then tells Boji that he should pursue something if he thinks he's found something important to him instead. Boji rushes into the fields wearing his adventuring getup in search of Kage. The two reunite in the same field they met the very first time and Boji reveals that he relinquished the throne back to Data, and that he instead plans to form his own kingdom just like his father, King Bose. The two set off on their next adventure under the setting sun. And that is Ranking of Kings Season 1 Recapped. How was the video? We hope it was good. If so, please check these videos. Also, please comment down your thoughts and your suggestions for future videos. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing now to show the support to our channel. We hope to see you soon with another video right in this channel. Have a nice day.